On the broadcast tonight, fire in the sky, a massive meteor crashes to Earth, a thousand people injured in an explosion with the force of an atomic bomb. And it happened on the same day as another close encounter, the closest asteroid we've ever seen. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening. I'm Lester Holt in tonight for Brian. The sky is not falling, but you'd be forgiven if the thought crossed your mind after two spectacular, but apparently unrelated cosmic close encounters today within just hours of each other. This morning in a remote part of Russia, some thought the world was ending when a 10-ton meteor, five stories tall, hurtled to Earth and exploded, causing a lot of injuries and doing a lot of damage without actually hitting anything. Its fiery descent was captured in vivid detail by numerous cameras. And then this afternoon, there was a very close call with a massive asteroid that whizzed by just 17,000 miles from our planet. In celestial terms, that is a very near miss. What do scientists make of all this? It was all one big cosmic coincidence. NBC's Tom Costello reports. The video from Russia is incredible. A massive meteor traveling at 33,000 miles per hour, trailing a brilliant white contrail, hitting the atmosphere and exploding with the force of an atomic bomb. You what? The shockwave over the town of Chelyabinsk damaged thousands of buildings, knocked down a factory wall, and blew out windows across the city in freezing temperatures. Just as kids were starting the school day. The ceiling was okay, but all the windows were broken. Almost all the window panes were damaged. There are no windows without damage. The shards of glass injuring more than a thousand people, 100 hospitalized. I heard this extremely loud noise that shook my apartment. Canadian hockey player Michael Garnett lives in Chelyabinsk. We talked to him via Skype. It blew the vents out of my bathroom and there was debris on the floor and I'm up on the 23rd floor and, and I could feel the building swaying. Pieces of the meteor punched a hole in a frozen lake but missed the town and a nearby nuclear plant. In Washington, scientist Linda Welsenbach specializes in meteorites at the Smithsonian. These are the primitive materials left over from when the planets formed and say are the basic building blocks of all our planetary material. It's heavy. It is indeed heavy. And in an amazing coincidence, the other space rock, an asteroid half the size of a football field, came whizzing by this afternoon. While the space station orbits 220 miles above the Earth, this afternoon's asteroid passed 17,000 miles above the Earth, much closer than many satellites that orbit 22,000 miles out. An object as large as this passes by the Earth, we think, on average, about once every 40 years. Two close calls today with the world wondering what would have happened if either one had hit a city. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Neil deGrasse Tyson is an astrophysicist and director of the Hayden Planetarium here in New York. Dr. Tyson, good to have you. You're, you're a man in demand today. <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me on. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> we all have a lot of questions about this. What we saw in Russia, first off, we know that this, extraordinary, is, a, yeah, extraordinary I mean, this is a big planet, mostly water. So is this something that happens more often than we know? With these uh, blasts of that magnitude, there was one in the 90s that uh, there was an air blast above India and Pakistan, right when they were negotiating nuclear control. And so that's a little worrisome because one of them might have accused the other of a first strike. If you fill in the blanks with places these might have fallen where no one would have taken notice, like the middle of the Pacific or over Antarctica or over the North Pole or northern Canada, uh, I'm imagining you'd get impacts of that magnitude anywhere between uh, one every five to ten years. And we should note, again, a lot of people have dashboard cameras in Russia, so those pictures we saw. Now let me ask you about this asteroid that, that had the near miss today. 17,000 miles, very close. That's a buzz cut. Here's what, here's what I've got to ask. Half the size of a football field, had it hit us? Yeah. Catastrophic? Oh, yeah. For, it, for the regionally catastrophic, no doubt about it. Uh, you saw what happened with that asteroid over in Russia, and that one is the size of just sort of a, a large boulder. Uh, this one was much larger, it would hit with much more energy, and the energy's got to go somewhere. In, a, in an air blast, there is heat, there is uh, the, the pulse of, of a compressive wave. It's basically a shock wave that can level buildings. Uh, you don't want that to happen over a city, and we're happy that most of Earth's surface is ocean, and most of Earth's land is not inhabited. So 
uh, you just sort of, you know, ca count your chances every time this happens, which is why I don't want to run away from these things. I want to deflect them. It'd be nice if we had uh, funding to do such a thing, but no such program in the world exists. That's another discussion. I could talk to you about this all day, but we appreciate you coming by. Excellent. Dr. Thanks for having me. Thanks.